And you know the sun's sitting fast Just like they say nothing good ever lasts Go on now and kiss it goodbye But hold on to your love because your heart's bound to die Go on now and say goodbye to our town, to our town Can't you see the sun sitting down on our town, on our town Good night Now I sit on the porch, watch lightning bugs fly I can't see too good, I got tears in my eyes I'm leaving tomorrow, but I don't wanna go I love you, my town, you'll always live in my soul And you know the sun's sitting fast and Just like you say, nothing good ever lasts Go on now and kiss it goodbye But hold on to your love because your heart's bound to die now Go on now and say goodbye to our town, to our town can't you see the sun sitting down on our town, on our town? Good night. Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include winners of the Burgio Academy Science Fair. Skid marks on the highway causing concerns. Interview with Kathy Cutler. These stories plus the BBS playbill, off the rack, and more coming up after this. Last Thursday, we visited the Burgio Academy Science Fair. On Friday of last week, the winners were announced at the Muff Inn Assembly. 75 students took part in the first science fair at Burgio Academy. The students were divided into groups, primary, elementary, and junior I. Judges for the fair were Lou Vatcher, Ms. Joy Barter, and Benjamin Vatcher. The winners of each level were awarded $20 for first place, $15 for second place, and $10 for third place. If students were in pairs, they shared the prize. For the primary section, the first place winners were Bailey Parsons and Joshua Pink. Brady Mercer came in second place, and third went to Emily Mead and Kelsey Grant. The winners of the elementary section were Ryan Durnford and Adrian Benoit in first place. Brian Sims and Dallin Tucker, second place, and Jeremy McDonald in third place. For junior high school, Lewis and Jeremy Ann were awarded first place. Dana Durnford and Zach Closure took second spot, and Dylan McDonald and Bethany Ann got third place. Mr. Vivian did the banner for the science fair. Mr. David Fever, Mr. John Barter, and Miss Elliott were instrumental in organizing this year's science fair. 
We extend our thanks to BBS volunteer Melissa Billard for filming this for us. Most of us that have vehicles have seen the skid marks on the highway between Scott's Garage and the turnoff to Aaron's Arm. These marks are a big concern because they mean someone was breaking the law and playing a dangerous game. We spoke to the RCMP about this matter. They told us they know the time the marks were put there, however, they don't know who was responsible. They also told us that it was probably done by a vehicle with rear, rear wheel drive. Skid marks like these appear when a driver of a vehicle comes to a complete stop and then floors the gas pedal. Behavior like this is not only dangerous, but is against the law. Dangerous because squealing tires can cause the driver to lose control of their vehicle. It causes the tires to wear down, and that could lead to a blowout. Squealing tires reduces the lifespan of a tire. Drivers can receive a ticket for squealing tires. If you see anyone taking part in this dangerous activity, please contact the RCMP. On Wednesday of this week, we had an interview with Kathy Cutler, mental health and addictions counselor. We have with us in our studio today, Kathy Cutler, mental health and addictions counselor. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. It's been a while. I know, been a long time. It yeah. is, yes. Yeah. This is mental health week. It is, yep. Yeah. Those things kind of sneak up on us, don't they? Very much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do. Okay, what's your theme for this year? Uh, mental health week this week is May 2nd, um, this year is May 2nd to the 8th. Yeah. And uh, the theme this year is uh, practice mind and body fitness. Practice mind and body fitness. Right. Okay. So basically that, you know, it's very important to take care of your physical health, but it's just as, as, just as important to take care of your mental health. Okay. Next question. Mm. How do we practice good mental health? That's a whole bunch of different things, but okay. mental health is a, uh, is a, I guess, a, a whole area in where you look at different aspects of your life and how you cope with different aspects of your life. So for maintaining good mental health could mean, um, you know, somebody who is, uh, you know, fairly active, who uh, is involved in the community, who... Um, has friends, who socializes, who feels connected, and overall feels uh, that they're contributing, uh, they're a contributing member of the community. And they can do that in a number of ways. So it's very individual in the sense that, you know, I just can't name it, this is the prescription, and, okay. and it, everybody be men mentally healthy. But we do know that there are certain things that will help people become more mentally healthy. And that involves certainly, you know, being, uh, eating a healthy diet, getting lots of sleep, not overindulging in, uh, you know, alcohol or other drugs, uh, caffeine, whatever the case may be, um, being, um, like I said earlier, around friends and having friends and social networks, volunteering, um, being able to express their emotions in a, in a respectful way, and having outlets for creativity and volunteering. Okay, those can I things. give you a scenario? Mm. Okay, this is, this is a personal one, right? Sure. Uh, both of our children are grown up and gone. Mm. And before our youngest one left, I had a lot of anxiety about him leaving. Sure. Um, what What would be good mental health practices for me that I should have done? I think I handled it very well, actually, okay. because it uh, um, he's moved on and he's very content and happy. And, and well, I first of all, I want to say it's very it's normal for you to be anxious about okay. that. And uh, you know, most people are very anxious when they when their last child is leaving the, in the house. So, knowing that you know a lot of these feelings are very normal, yeah, that helps a lot okay. right there. And that you know, also keeping in mind that uh, that uh, feelings come and go. So, like you said, now as you were going through it, you're feeling anxious. But as as when he moved on, he's doing better, and so are you. Yeah. And that's very important to know that yes, you will feel anxious for a while, but knowing that you will be able to get through it, cope with it, and you'll go on okay. with your life. So. I don't see any issues okay. really. I mean, okay. you know, that's a hard time, and people are going to have difficulty with it when their children leave. So, to expect that you're going to have may have a difficult time for a period a period is normal. I would see it being uh, maybe of concern if a year from the time your child left that you were still feeling very down, very anxious. You weren't sleeping. You weren't eating. Okay. Then, then it was a problem. Then that would be yes. Okay. 
right. then it will be, you know, uh, or you're not even a year. I shouldn't say a year, even less than that, but you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, yes, I, mean, I do. Yeah, yeah temporary. Yeah, no, he left last year in July, and if mm. I was feeling this way st still in October, right. I would have a problem. There, there would be cause for concern. Okay. You're not coping, you're not, you know, you're not adjusting to the new reality, right? Okay. I mean, because life is about adjusting, so having good mental health is about how you cope with the, the bad things that happen in your life. Everybody has bad things happen in their life, and yeah. and uh, sometimes we feel that we're not. Sometimes we feel we're not able to go on. It's how we adjust and how we cope and how we gather our uh, supports around us to help us through difficult times. That uh, you know tells how we fare out in the end. Would okay. um, would the fact that when you know that that was going to happen, like we obviously we knew that was going to happen, and most parents do realize that. Yeah. But actually facing up to the fact that, you know, our life is going to change, and now right. it's going to be just my husband and I, where before it was my husband and I and our yeah. two children. Right. So maybe facing, being aware of that fact kind of helped, do you think? Oh, I think so. And also pre you could prepare for that, too, yeah. because you knew in a certain period of time that, you know, these people, you know, your children were going to leave. That's right. So... Uh, you know, beginning to make adjustments in your own life and, and, you know, the time that you were spending with your child, you would, you know, some people may increase their volunteer work or increase okay. things, you know, do with their free time that they wouldn't normally have had. So you begin preparing for that adjustment way before they ever leave. Okay. And, it, you know, beginning to accept the reality of what it would be like for yeah. the individual to be gone. Same as you when anybody dies or anybody leaves your home or moves away. There's always loss. You're going to experience sure. a loss and sadness and grief over yeah. that, and that's quite normal. So you're going to feel all those different feelings, and, and that's, that's very, very normal. Okay, I know that was probably not no. an extreme scenario, but that no, was but the one that popped in mind. very common. <laughs> that's the one that popped it, in mind. Very, very common, right? Yes. So, yes, I mean, and certainly coping with those changes. I mean, your life is full of changes, and, that's right. and at every stage, there, you know, there are many changes. So an indicator of good mental health is how you get through those changes, okay. how you are able to cope and, you know, not saying it's not hard at the time, it may be very difficult as you're going through it, but how you rally around it, how you cope, how you adjust to those changes. So that was pro that's probably a very good um, lesson to take and, and go with a more serious problem if you had a more, if you were facing a more serious problem, right? Yes, it okay. applies to lots of different situations. Okay, for perfect. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the most common mental illnesses? Okay, so, like, like I guess, again, I mean, and we have talked about this before, I mean, mental health certainly is the ideal, and that we have, we cope, we want to have mentally healthy lives, we want to be able to live fulfilling lives. And people, there are, there are lots of people who will, at one point or other in their life, most of us, actually, at one point or other in life, will suffer from some form of mental illness. And mental illness is no different, really, than physical illness, it's only... It affects a, a part of you know our brain. Our brain is a part of our body, like any other part, like our arm or leg, and it can get sick just as well as our heart or our lungs or or any other illness. And this is how we approach it. The major difference is that that it's just our society looks at mental illnesses with a stigma, in the in the fact that we are able to do something better, or that it's a weakness in some way when people suffer from uh, mental illnesses. So some of the more common mental illnesses. Your question was around depression. Uh, is one is one ma major uh, mental illness, anxiety disorders. You were just saying and becoming very anxious. Anxiety disorders are very very common. Like manic, um, uh, people experience manic depression, um, obsessive compulsive disorders. People who uh, you know have uh, compulsive tendencies, obsessive thoughts, and compulsive behaviors, and they will repeat those over and over. That can be like hoarding behaviors. There's a whole bunch of obsessive compulsive type. Yeah. Uh, illnesses, um, and you know, people will suffer in suffer time. You know, really suffer in silence a lot of times in trying to uh, manage or trying to understand what's what's uh, happening to them. There are, and as I said, panic disorder is another anxiety disorder. There are, you know, uh, anorexia nervosa, anorexia bulimia. There is all mental. There's some other mental illnesses. So there's a whole host range of mental illnesses. That you know, we could talk. I could stay a day That's talking right. about just the illnesses himself. Uh, and but I think what's important to remember is that people um, can suffer from mental illness, but they can also recover from mental illness. And people who have mental illnesses can be very mentally healthy. Just because you have mental illness doesn't mean that you can't Cold, lead. It, okay, yes, yeah, can't okay. lead a mentally healthy life. Yes. There are people who yeah. suffer from depression who get treatment for it are certainly still that prone to be depressed, or people who have. Uh, bipolar disorder, 
you know, manic depression where they get highs and lows and they are on medication and they get treatment for it and they certainly live and they can live mentally healthy lives. Schizophrenia is another mental illness that people certainly cope well and uh, can cope well with it and learn to, you know, go on and adjust to it. So I think it's very important to remember that, that treatment is available and with help and with treatment people with these illnesses can live mentally, mentally healthy lives. And that's the main point I guess I want to make there, right? Um, with regard to depression, depression is one of the more common ones. And I think um, that uh, most of us at one point in our life will suffer uh, a bout of depression. Now, whether it's clinical depression or not, that, that would be, that's up to a doctor to decide. You know, I mean, we have to be assessed and, and certainly uh, a doctor would be the most appropriate person to do that. You know, and we hear all the time people say, oh, well, I feel really depressed or I feel really sad. Okay, so mm. that was my next question. Like, mm. how would you know you're depressed? Yeah, yeah, and that's and like I said. So we, you know, we're always saying that. So it's kind of, but that's not what we're talking about. Not the occasional sadness or something bad happens and you feel sad for a bit. Depression is is quite a bit different. You know, it's a lot more than just feeling down or sad or blue. Um, you know, depression can affect young or old children, become depressed adults, older, you know, uh, senior citizens. It doesn't matter. Um, but it can become an, in, uh, an illness or clinical depression is when uh, it lasts for over a period of two weeks. If you're feeling uh, very, very sad, hopeless, down, and it, it goes on for a period of over two weeks, uh, it continues to get worse and worse. It doesn't start getting better. And it starts to interfere with your work or your daily life. You're not able to get, for example, you're not able to get out of bed. Um, or when you do, it's very difficult. You're not able to get in the shower. You lose interest. Okay in activities that once gave you a lot of pleasure. You're not able to participate in hobbies or leisure activities or you just start to isolate yourself from friends and family. Okay. You start to withdraw more and more into yourself. So, um, you know, clinical depression is really is an illness and the people who suffer from clinical depression oftentimes don't even know they have it. No. Especially if it's a low grade clinical you know, depression. They may have it for years, suffer, suffer in, for years and years and not realize that they, are, they actually do have an illness and that there is a treatment for it. And that's a really sad thing because clinical depression is one of the most treatable mental illnesses that there is. And, and a lot of people never ever get treatment for it, never ever realize that there is something outside of that. And that's really sad, right? I, I, okay. I find that's really, really sad. Um, as uh, my next question was like, um, thinking, thinking again of, of uh, young people and, and children, mm. like, I would assume, maybe I'm assuming wrong, mm. that as an adult you would be more able to identify that you are depressed or there's something wrong. Mm. But say, for example, if it was a young person now, or and I had my two children live home again, mm. and I noticed a big change in their behavior, mm. um, what should I be aware of? Should okay. some of the things that you just named, or was there something else? Well, uh, for young people in particular, there, there are things that you would be, uh, you know, you would be on the lookout for. You know, a lot of them are common to adults, but uh, there are some differences with regard, especially teenagers and, and young adults. And um, um, if they're in school, there would be, you would probably see a uh, drop in grades, um, uh, mood swings uh, up and down. So sometimes they may be very. Uh, it can be very angry or sometimes it could be very excited, agitated, a lot of nervous energy, you know, at times. And other times you may not be able to, uh, to get out of bed. Um, so very, very, uh, you know, very listless. You would see changes in their eating habits. Um, be lo on the lookout for, um, you know, not eating at all or eating a lot more. So, you know, or you may not even, if you're not used to, you know, taking notice of that, maybe even losing, you notice that they're losing weight or gaining weight. Okay. And there's a sudden change in that, a right? A sudden change. I was mm. just thinking, like, um, with teenagers in the house, uh, when they get to a certain point, it seems like their appetite increases anyway. Right. So, uh, so that, that could was be a normal a no thing. That could be a normal thing for mm. some of them. But right. uh, what you're saying is if the hobbits had happened, if they were eating a lot and, you know, mm. a, a healthy appetite and they're always snacking, right. then all of a sudden they go to the opposite end right. and they, their appetite, well, they didn't want this or they didn't want, yes. they so. weren't eating or whatever. That would be a good sign. Yes. Okay. So if overall you know that your child got a good appetite, then yeah. all of a sudden they don't, they're not eating. Yeah. Or if the child usually just eats, you know, minimal, but that's yeah. their normal way. Yeah. You know, they're, then, they're a late eater. And then all of a sudden they're eating okay. all the time. Yeah. I'm just, you know, you're looking for changes, right? Yeah. So if somebody's going, all, going along and, and, 
you know, that's your normal. You know what they are normally. So yeah. if it's out of the out of the normal, yeah, would be for them. And you know, if they stop going to their activities, if they're having problems with peers, those kinds of signs, uh, you know, would uh, uh, would indicate that there could be uh, problems with you know with depression. Teenagers are under a lot of problems. You know, young adults are under a lot of pressures these uh, these days, and they're not old, they're not they haven't got the life experience to learn to have the coping skills sure. that a lot of times adults will have. Yeah. And they do turn to other means to cope at times. It may not be the most positive. So, you know, um, I guess in a, being in a parent's position, it's very important for you to realize, uh, you know, if there is any indication of depression and what you can do to help them, you know, seek help for that, sure. right? Because people who are depressed a lot of times don't know and they're not going to ask for help. Because okay. we always say, well, you know, a lot of times we, uh, as adults think, well, that's their you know, issue, and you know, if somebody wants help, they know where to go to get it. I don't. It's not my issue, but um, you know, we have to keep in mind that sometimes when people are depressed, they don't. They're they not conscious of that. But exactly, yeah. they're not conscious. They know and they there's do something need somebody wrong. else okay. to point it out. Yeah, there's. Some, they, they know that deep down there's something wrong, but they yeah. really can't put their finger on what it is, and they're not sure where they should go to. Right, and to they don't have out. the energy. Yeah, sure. A lot of times, they just don't have the energy to yeah. even think about it, to, to bother, bother with it. With so. It. It. Somebody else, you know, would uh, would need to do that for them, right? Okay. Um, this is Mental Health Week. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to have your user display at the Caller Health Care Center? Yeah, we're going to have, well, not this week because they have another display up there right now, okay. but we're going to have our display for the rest of the month, actually. Okay. Even though it's Mental Health Week this week, we're going to have a display up there next week and a, uh, a questionnaire around mental health. And I'm having a lot of information around depression as well as other mental health um, issues. Um, and uh, like suicide and, um, you know, other mental illnesses and, and how to, uh, you know, have a good, good mentally, healthily uh, person okay. and how to help people do that, right? So I want to focus on, on those two issues because it seems to be um, a concern right now and certainly the more information we get out around that, I just want to let the community know that there is going to be a lot of uh, written information that we weren't able to get you know, I'm sure. able to get a lot of it out, you know, in this talk today. Yeah. But I want to let the community know that I will be having a lot of information out around depression, um, especially depression in young people um, and suicide in young people, um, what the signs to are, what to look for, what you can do to help, and where to go for help. That will be in our display next week, and it will be there for the remainder of the month. We will have a, like I said, a questionnaire with prizes will be drawn. Uh, like we have in past years as well, right? So, so come out and fill out an application, and hopefully we'll see everybody at the hospital. And okay. And uh, directly following our news broadcast on uh, tonight, we will be having um, airing a video. And uh, can you? I can't remember what the name of it is. Yeah. It's called um, Out of the Dark, and it's about um, it's called it's, uh, about youth and depression. Okay. And it's a story. It's a very I found very very helpful. It's a uh, video about a young girl. It talks. She's talking about her own experience. She tried okay. to commit suicide. She failed. Yeah. Um, but she talks about how she struggled with depression all through her teenage years. And in this video, she's going around and meeting with students. That was one okay. of her goals. And and she talks about how she uh, first learns that she has depression because she had it for years and didn't realize she had it. Um, then when an event caused her to try to kill herself, she uh, uh, an incident with a, an ex-boyfriend. Okay. And that anyway goes on to tell how she uh, has learned to manage her depression, and so that she's now living a, a very much more healthy, balanced life, okay. where she you know she's able to experience a lot of joy and and and, uh, and certainly a lot happier than she was you know. Okay, I'm sure it'll be uh, it'll, it'll be yeah. helpful for so it kind of goes hand in hand what we're talking about here, right? Sure. So I'm hoping everybody gets a chance to get that. Okay. And if anybody, I just want to remind people too that my office is open. If anybody ever got any questions about anything, they don't they can call up anonymously. They don't have to leave their name. If they got any questions or concerns, and I just want to remind everybody that my you know my office it is confidential, and we certainly do have other professionals in the community. If they're not comfortable t contacting me, there are other people like on our trauma response team, um, you know, um, there are a number of members on our trauma response team, other social workers, the guidance counselor, you know, clergy members. These people are all in our community. They're all there for if you need help or you need to talk to somebody. And like with all of our services, it is confidential. Nobody will know that you have called 
um, you know, only you and myself or you and the person you're speaking to. There are other, if you don't want to do that, there are other uh, information lines as well. The Mental Health Crisis Line is a toll-free 24-hour service that's available around the clock with trained counsellors that you can call and speak to at any time. And that number is 1-888-737-4668. Um, so, you know, anybody can call that number at any time. And also there's the Kids Help Phone. I don't remember that offhand, but I do know it's on the inside cover of our phone book. Okay. The Kids Help Phone is, a, again, another toll-free, you know, no-charge uh, phone number that kids can call if they feel that they need to talk to somebody. And, then, you know, I guess one of the main things we need to do, remember, with regard to any of these illnesses, is that we do need to talk about them, that keeping it undercover and keeping it under wraps and not talking about it and pretending that that's there does not work. We do need to address it and we need to be up front, talk about it and uh, and get it out in the open. And the more we do that, the less stigma is attached to people coming forward and getting help because a lot of times that's what stops people. Okay, well, okay. did you, uh, is there anything else? Or? No, I, that's it. I just want to thank you for letting me come down today and go on my big spiel. Oh, <laughs> you're more than welcome. We're glad to have you. Okay, thanks. Stay tuned for more of this Week in Review coming up after this. It's the only planet known to sustain life. The only one whose atmosphere has been regulated by nature to create the perfect balance. But today the Earth is warming and nature is not doing it. Fortunately, all of us know someone who has the power to do something. On Friday of this week, our community saw another group of young people celebrating a graduation ceremony. Here are a few highlights. Stay with us for Off the Rack and the BBS Playbill, all after this. What if your family lived in a home on an island you couldn't leave? With limited amounts of food and safe drinking water. It would be very important to make things last, wouldn't it? Especially if your family kept growing, and growing, and growing. Well, it doesn't matter where your home is, because we all live on an island we can't leave. So please, use only what you need, because supplies truly are limited. We can do that. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of this year's grad class receiving scrolls from Mr. Melton Vatcher during their grade 6 graduation. Let's look back to June 1999. <laughs> Julie Bay. Mm -hmm. 
Megan Wheeler. BBS Playbill. Tune in on Tuesday for a rebroadcast of Pansy's Garden. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing LOA TV Bingo. On Thursday, tune in for a rebroadcast of Out of the Dark from the Canadian Mental Health Association. Join Pansy and the gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. Next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 43, we will have the service from the First Pentecostal Church from Cornerbrook. And I'll be here again next week with this week in review. Please stay tuned now for Out of the Dark, a video from the Canadian Mental Health Association. We would also like to remind everyone that as a part of Municipal Awareness Week, the Burgio Town Council will be having their regular monthly meeting at the Fire Hall tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We would also like to wish all the mothers and caregivers in our community a very happy Mother's Day. We hope you enjoyed your day. For this week in review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.